Let's look at body accessories. Let's go into transmission. So here's some transmission connectors and controls. And again, we can blow this stuff up. And it not only shows you where it is, it really kind of shows you what it looks like. And that's you can identify nice. it very quickly that way. A picture's worth a million words. Not just a thousand. Not just a thousand anymore. Oops, <laughs> go back. Get that train module right there. And again, print this stuff out if you're not sure of it. It's always good to have uh, a paper copy so you can make notes on it. Uh, or I like to print out all the paper because that way I have this raft of paper and it shows the customer that I did something for all that money, that it wasn't black magic or any other type of magic. Okay, so now let's go back. We had all this information here. Let's go to the menu. We went through a lot of the information. I want to ask if you have any questions on that before we go on to the lab scope. Do you have to pay for Mode 6 info? Yes, Mode 6 information you have to pay for, again, from the manufacturer website. We said you can go to Tech Authority for Chrysler, you can go to Motocraft for Ford, you can go to Toyota, whatever website you can go there and get the information. Um, as of now, it does J2534 reprogramming. Yep, J2534 reprogramming this, this unit does do that. That is absolutely correct. And let's see, uh, can you calibrate speedometers due to tire size changes? That would be a, um, not a programming, but a... Um, it's a coding, coding issue. A coding issue. And um, if it doesn't do it now, I know they're working on a lot of stuff to do down the road. Again, uh, we don't have time in this class to play with that, but we'll see. So right now we're going to go into, oh, Craig reminds me, bi-directional control. Uh, oh. We already turned off this engine, so I guess we have to That's okay, just turn the key on. We'll use the key on. Okay, so what we're doing here, I forgot to go over um, bi-directional controls and some of the stuff like injectors, we're not going to run that one. I'm going to do a relay test here, and I'm going to do the... Uh, the fan relay so maybe you could hear it. The nice thing here, it tells you that the ASD has to be on, okay, and the engine has to be off. It kind of warns you what's going on. We're going to hit continue, and bi-direction control is important. Why? Why replace a component if you can merely take your scan tool and hit a control like I'm doing, and when I do this, I'm actually going to hit start, and when it starts, the fan should come on, and there it's in process. And it's not just replacing a component, it's a quick, fast, uh, easy check to see if, if the whole system's working. The computer's controlling it, the, the uh, device is activating, everything's good. And if you just listen up. It should register as a slight buzzing sound on your microphone. It sounds more impressive here. So you should hear that up and down, and that way you know bi-directional works. And I'm just going to exit the procedure right now. By the way, bi-directional does time out in a certain amount of time. And there's a whole bunch of bi-directional right in special tests. So you can look at injectors. You can do injectors. Careful doing injectors. Why? You can hydrostatically lock a motor, right, Pierre? Yeah, you don't want to be pumping those cylinders full of fuel. That's right. If you're going to do them, you're going to, you're going to make sure it works. A good idea is to move the injectors out. Never put your hands in front of a fuel injector because it's behind high pressure. You can hypo spray the fuel into your skin. Make sure there's no spark around so we don't get flamethrower experience back to NAM or anything, okay? Make sure we put them in little tubes or jars that we could see how much fuel is spraying in there. And this way you can check them. If you just wanted to check them a little bit to see what they spray, what do you do? You put a pressure gauge on the rail. And let's say it's 50 pounds like on this vehicle. 50 pounds it starts with. You press the uh, component test here for bi-directional control and it drops down. It times it for a certain amount. It drops down to 40. The next one goes to 40. The next one doesn't go down that much. It goes 48. We may have a clog. The next one drops to 30. We have a big problem. You get the idea. That's what bi-directional control can do to us. 
for right. us, I should say. So there's our bi-directional stuff, and now I think it's time to get on a scope because we are running a little bit behind. We hit scope, and I'm just going to shut this off. We hit scope, and with scope, we're going to go lab scope. Now, and we're on a, uh, an injector. We have both a current probe and a voltage, two traces. Current probe being that upper trace, the uh, voltage signature being the lower trace. Now, one of the things we got to do here, we do have an amp clamp on there, but you notice the trigger here, we got a problem. We're not really seeing the fuel injector real good, so I'm going to fix that. And how did I fix that? What I did is if we go here, we wanted to go and switch the voltage and make sure our trigger, and watch. He went from upslope to downslope. You see the trigger? Now watch. You see the screen froze. Why did the screen freeze? Because I moved the trigger. If I take the trigger and I move it up, you notice it freezes again. Basically, if, it, if the trigger is not in the range of the signal, it's going to display the very last thing it saw and it's just going to freeze there. Now, I like to take trigger and put it at half the voltage. So basically, if we're using the scope, number one, we know we're at zero. At zero, we basically know that the computer ground is pulling the voltage down. Notice this line is 20 volts. This probably would be 10, right? But between it, we know that the charging system is working on his car. Why? Because it's definitely more than 12 volts, isn't it? Right. So that's one way to check the voltage line as it's being pulled out of the ground. The amount of time that it's on from here to there is called pulse width. Pulse width is the amount of time that injector is spraying. When it shuts off, we have this clip. And you notice this is done by the vehicle's computer where it's clipping that fuel injector so we don't have a big spike. This spike should be a minimal of 35 volts. And if you notice, we're probably 45 plus volts there. The other thing to notice on this other screen, and by the way, we're on a 100 volt scale. That's on the yellow. Channel two, we're on amperage. The maximum we can read is two. We're reading about 900 milliamps. As voltage drops down, amperage starts to go up. By the way, this is the little pintle hump right there. Now you may go, it's a little fuzzy. What's all of this fuzzy wuzzies? Well, to be honest with you, we're running, we have a couple of different cars in here, and we're running a long set of leads that will also pull up more interference. So it may be clearer depending on how close you are to the signal. You're not worrying about this, this is just telling you it's in a range. One thing you do need to worry about, and this is super important, if we have any amperage that's going over 1.2 amps for more than 6 milliseconds, again, more than 1.2 amps, that's 1,200 milliamps, right Pierre? That's right. For more than 6 milliseconds, that's going to burn a computer driver or circuit out. That causes a problem. So don't just change a computer. Nope. Find out why it blew. The, the computer is the most expensive fuse in the vehicle, so please keep that in mind. Don't just go plugging a new one in. Find out what caused that thing to actually burn out. Hopefully that makes sense to you. We're going to take a couple of questions. I'm going to show you how we're going to put some readings up here. Notice my trigger is at 8 point something volts. Well, why? If I know that the fuel injector or EVAP solenoid or whatever is running on 12 to 14 volts, trigger at half the voltage and you'll get a good signal. Stable signal. You stable. don't want it dancing around the nice screen. Nice and stable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the settings, and this is how it's done. I'm going to hit the DMM button, and now up top I have the voltage, okay, I got maximum, look at that, that was pretty close, 56.6. There's our minimum, and there's our average voltage. Here's our amperage, okay, in milliamps. And by the way, on the bottom of the scope, let's move back to one second here, like the wire. We're looking at our time frame. If I want to change this time frame, notice I got five milliseconds. 